Dan Kaplan, executive editor of SC Magazine. Sitting beside me is Tatu Ulanen, who is the CEO of the SSH Communications and the original inventor of the SSH protocol. Tatu, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Nice to meet you. You invented this protocol going back a couple decades now, mid-1990s. Uh, all well and good, but now uh, hundreds of millions of devices are running SSH, and yet a lot of folks are having difficulty managing the keys associated with it. So before we get into that, I hope you could take us sort of through SSH and how the protocol has evolved since you invented it, and then get into some of these key management issues. Yeah. So I developed the original protocol back in '95 to address basically passwords being transmitted in the clear, and password sniffing was the biggest security threat on the internet at that time. Uh, so I published the soft, uh, published this free software in '95, started a company around that at the end of '95. We introduced the second version of the protocol around 97, 98. It's been standardized by the IETF, and today it's used for system administration, file transfers, uh, application integration in large IT environments throughout the world on probably hundreds of millions of devices. And it really runs the gamut of, of industry. It's on every Unix and Linux computer, every Macintosh. Uh, in virtu running virtualization platforms, more than half of world's web servers use SSH either to manage the virtual machine on which the web server runs or the underlying virtualization platform. So, what's, what's happening? I mean, what sort of problems are developing? People use SSH to automate running command remotely on other machines, to automate system administration, to uh, as part of file transfer solutions, as part of privilege access management solutions. And they use keys to allow login without a password. The problem is there's not been control over the, over the creation of these keys or tracking what each key is used for. And working with some of the largest enterprises and banks in the world, we found that people have more than, in some cases, more than a hundred keys per server in the IT environments. We did a scan of, of one large, large customer's environment for 10,000 hosts. We found over a million keys granting access to accounts on those systems. 10% of those granting root access. And chances are these organizations don't even know those keys exist, those keys are redundant. I mean, what is the Exactly. They don't know who can access what. They can remove access because they don't know which applications will break. Uh, they cannot change the keys. And these are for automated access, not for interactive users. Yeah. So when we're talking about encryption protocols and we're talking about getting a hold of these keys, uh, if you're someone who shouldn't have access to them, what sort of things can you do? Can you get access to sensitive data? Can you uh, uh, introduce malware to the environment? Yeah. So a system admin could, for instance, have copied the keys and gain access later. If a virus gets into the environment, it can use these keys to spread from one system to another. And if you imagine having a hundred trust relationships between computers from each computer in the network, maybe 10 incoming connections with root access, the highest possible privileges, the, once you get inside, you can use these keys to spread effectively throughout the environment, infecting every critical production server, backup system, management servers, basically yeah. taking down the whole enterprise, or if it's done countrywide, uh, as kind of part of a cyber warfare attack, taking down the whole national infrastructure. Yeah, and SSH is based on those trust relationships, so if those are compromised, you could be in some big trouble. Yeah, it's critically important to start eliminating the excess trust relationships, to start rotating the keys so that access gets properly terminated. So, are there real-life examples of issues happen, uh, happening because of this? Already 20 years ago, the first internet war that was widely spread, that took down the internet at that time, in 88, uh, this was called the Morris War, it used the precursor of these trust relationships called R-host authentication to spread it from one machine to another. It also had some other spreading mechanisms, like most modern viruses do. They use mm -hmm. multiple vectors to spread it. This allows you to invade the whole enterprise once you are in. 
Yeah, and, and, and now if you have key management issues, certainly you're running afoul of compliance regulations as well. Not to, you know we're not, we're not even talking about the malware issue or the data loss issue. I mean you're 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 breaching some of your compliance obligations. Yes, SOX requires that you must know who can access what and that you must properly terminate access, regardless whether the access is based on keys or passwords or something else. Same requirements in FISMA for the federal government. Same requirements in HIPAA for healthcare. Same requirements in PCI for credit card processing. Right. When you have express requirements for key management, it says that keys need to be changed regularly. Okay. None of the big enterprises we know of removes these keys or changes them on a systematic basis. So what it comes down to is information assurance. So what sort of tips, techniques, advice do you have for organizations who ha are running SSH but might be having some key management headaches? We just uh, did a major deal with one of the top 10 banks in the, in the world for solving this problem. The solution basically involves discovering what keys there are, taking those into management, finding out which keys are still in use, removing old keys, moving keys on the systems so that only authorized users can create new keys, and rotating those keys regularly so that uh, that a copy key doesn't provide access forever. Yeah, and I would imagine that there should be uh, only particular users should be able to make changes and, and handle these keys. In other words, it shouldn't go be, yeah. it, it, you know it shouldn't go beyond a certain person's responsibility. Exactly. Like we have a customer who has two hundred administrators who can create new keys, basically allow permit access for new users to come into their critical production servers. Uh, with the key management system, we can limit that to maybe five users who have access to the key management system. The others don't need to be able to create new keys. Mm. And we get full change control and approvals on those key setups. Right now, many organizations have no approval process for key-based access grants. Yeah. Okay. Tatu Lanen, thank you for being with us. The inventor of SSH. Uh, you beat me to it. I was almost. I almost had SSH created, and then and then you somehow created it. But uh, but thanks for being with us today. And I'm glad that you're seeing this standard along and now helping folks out with managing it. So thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to everyone again soon.